We're here today with Wharton marketing professor Giddy Neve to talk about some of his latest research. Giddy, thanks for being here. Hi, Rachel. Nice being here too. And so, first of all, could you just give us a brief overview of your research? What you were trying to, what question you were trying to ask? Yeah, well, I came to Wharton from a neuroscience department, and uh, my work uh, is uh, mostly focused on the biological basis of how people make decisions. Uh, we all know that the way we make decisions is influenced by our biological state. Things like hunger, sleep deprivation, and stress influence the process of decision making. And I'm trying to study this in a rigorous way using lab experiments and uh, some biological data. And what have been some of the key takeaways from your research? Well, one of the things I study is uh, hormones and how hormones influence decision making. We all know that there are many situations in which uh, different hormones fluctuate in our body. Uh, stress is a good example. Uh, we all have a very uh, clearly measurable biological stress response that uh, consists of elevation of several hormones in our body, like noradrenaline and cortisol. Uh, one of the things that I am studying is how cortisol specifically affects decision making, and we do it by pharmacologically administering this hormone to people under a double blind and placebo controlled protocol. Uh, what's interesting is that giving cortisol to people is not stressing them out. Cortisol is actually a stress response, it's something that makes people more relaxed. Uh, but the interesting thing that we find is that even though people are not even aware of the fact that they received cortisol, we see very clear behavioral effects of this drug on how people make decisions. Uh, one thing specifically that we take a look at is uh, the trade-off between people's accuracy and speed when making the decisions. Uh, we have this uh, paradigm called the cognitive reflection test. I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, I can give an example using sure. one question. That'd be great. You're going to try to answer it. But, okay, okay. No, I can do that. All right. So there is a bet and a ball, like a baseball bet and mm -hmm. a ball, and together they cost a dollar and ten cents. So far, you're, we're good? Yep. Yeah. Now, the bet costs a dollar more than the ball, right? And again, together they're one dollar and ten cents. Now, what's the price of the ball? Ten cents. Okay. So you just gave me your intuitive answer, which is the intuitive answer of most people. So if the ball is 10 cents and the bet is $1 more, that means that the bet is $1.10. So together there will be $1.20. So the correct answer that you will have to check yourself and get into some uh, more, uh, I'd say, deliberate calculations is $5, 5 cents and $1.05. Uh, what we see is that when you give cortisol to people, they're more likely to do what you just did and mm -hmm. say 10 cents uh, and not deliberate and think it through, even though they have some incentives to really think it through and they get paid for being correct. Uh, they're just giving their gut answer faster as if uh, they're in kind of time pressure. Uh, they're more likely to rely on this incorrect but uh, simple heuristic uh, in the decision-making process. So I'm using this task uh, uh, Many times uh, I find it quite interesting to study. We have uh, other studies where I give testosterone to people. Testosterone, again, is a hormone that is involved in instinctive behaviors in animals such as uh, intramale aggression and mating behaviors. Again, it typically rises in contexts where it's better to act fast. And we see, again, that men that receive testosterone are more likely to fail in questions like the bet and the ball ones. Uh, so this is one topic that uh, I'm currently studying. Uh, yeah. So other than my questionable math skills, what can, we, what, what can businesses take away from this? I mean, I can imagine there's lots of different applications from this, from, I mean, human resources departments dealing with their employees to yes. businesses dealing with their customers. I mean, it would really run the gamut, I would think. Yes. So for start, failing in this question is not necessarily bad. If you have a good intuitive response, you will answer it faster after when you're stressed or uh, having high level of testosterone. But uh, there are some situations where deliberation is needed. And there are some situations and some people that are more vulnerable to make fatal mistakes in these situations. And I think it's important that we pay attention to these situations and make sure that uh, these won't happen. For example, once you're stressed, if you're put in an environment that you know well, perhaps you'll respond good. But if you, I put you in, in a completely novel environment and give you some easy to fail uh, questions, you may be worse off dramatically because of being stressed. So I think it's important that we know when and where 
to expect these uh, fatal mistakes. It also seems to me like it would also for, I mean, for the point of like a retailer, for example, like the idea of if you can try to figure out what state the customers are when they come in your door, that you can try to sort of adjust your environment accordingly to either, you know, to make them less stressed or to sort of point them towards the decision you might want them to make. That's true. One would say that maybe uh, you can manipulate people easily more um, when they're stressed or when they have this boost of testosterone. On the other hand, I don't know if that's what you want to do because overall, we want customers to be satisfied, and if they're more likely to make mistakes, they're more likely to regret their purchase and let's enjoy it and not come back. So I think that, uh, again, uh, it depends on the situation, but uh, on my side, I think it's better to know. And also for me as a customer, it's better to know, for example, that when I'm stressed, I'm not going to go to the supermarket. Uh, or hungry. <laughs> or hungry, right. I mean, hunger is a sort of a stressful situation. True. And so what's next for you? What's next for this research? Well, we, we're we living now in a time when uh, we can measure and we can manipulate a lot of uh, factors that we couldn't in history. Uh, and it's not only hormones. I'm talking about brain activity. We can look at uh, where you're looking at, eye tracking uh, data. We can look at the uh, brain images, uh, meaning the anatomical structure of the brain. We can look at genes. All of these things are uh, measurable nowadays, and uh, we can learn a lot from about individual differences uh, between people from these measures. And I think it's a very exciting time now uh, to be working on this intersection between biological science and behavioral science. And obviously, the best uh, type of behavioral data we can get is now coming from marketing and from online behavior. Great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Rachel.